Hi guys, welcome back to the MCM Buzz Stage live in London. And look who we have, it's Mrs. Scott Atkins. Way, hello, hello. Nice a round of applause, it's great to I see you. I forgot I was in that film. <laughs> That's a good start. He's done so many, though, I guess, now. It must be hard to keep up. Yeah, too many. Workaholic. <laughs> so I know recently you've been working on Triple Threat in Thailand with Tony Jaa. How's that been going? Yeah, action film with Tony Jaa, the guy from Ong Bak. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, yeah. There you go. Always wanted to work with Tony Jaa since I saw Ong Bak, obviously. We're the same age. So... I've always seen him as, uh, you know, him and Donnie Yen, in case he's listening. <laughs> as, you know, the premier <laughs> martial arts guys of the moment, right? Because, of course, Absolutely. you've got Jackie Chan, you've got Jet Li, but they're, they're advancing in years. So, over in the East, I've viewed Tony and uh, Donnie as the best of the best. And we can add Eco Oase to the list now, the guy from The Raid. Yeah, um, so, movie. in Triple Threat, it's Tony Jar. Eco Oase, um, Tiger Chen from Man of Tai Chi, and then you got the bad guys, which is me, Michael Jai White, and Michael Bisping, the middleweight UFC champ. And um, he's all right, you know. He plays the heel, but he's a good lad. Uh, and yeah, it's a full on action movie, loads of fights, loads of gunfights. A hell of a lot of fun. I love working in Thailand. I mean, it, it looks like a lot of fun. And obviously, there's a lot of names in that in terms of martial arts. Is it quite a close-knit family, the martial arts family? Like, do you guys play poker, have backflip contests? What do you do when you're together? No, man, I'll tell you. With, the martial, with, with true martial artists, um, there's a lot of respect. Because you come up through the dojo, you know, your talk, courtesy, perseverance, self-control, all the rest of it. Um, but with some of the action guys, there's a, there's a lot of egos flying about sometimes. So, um, you know, the one actor doesn't want to be shown up by the other actor. There's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of posturing. I'm, I'm pretty cool with it. I don't mind getting beaten up by someone. You know, it's just yeah. a film at the end of the day. It's not sure. real life. It's important to be able to separate that. But some people find it difficult to do that. It's all for fun. Naming no names. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. Particularly on this film, though. Everyone was amazing. Have you got a bit um, of a bromance with Tony Jaa now? Oh, absolutely. Listen, he's a very humble guy. He's a Buddhist, as most people from Thailand are. And uh, just a very respectful guy. And Eco the same. And everyone was... Uh, it was one of the best experiences I've had on a film in terms of everybody just got along. And do you learn much from guys like Tony Jaa and Dolph Lundgren? Are they sort of mentoring you in any way at all? Um, I mean, you, you learn by just watching how they hold themselves on set and, uh, you know, how, how they do things. I learned a lot on The Expendables, yeah. seeing all those big action stars. Yeah. Um, how they hold themselves, how they represent themselves, how hard they work, how particular they are about how they look and how the films look. You know, they're very hard-working people. They're very dedicated. Um, and it's just good to reaffirm that. Well, having filmed so much in Thailand, have you got any favorite places and things that you like to do when you're out there? In Thailand? Um, well, if you get to go down south to the uh, places like Krabi and, uh, you know, Koh Samui and all that, I mean, it, it, it's paradise down there. It's one of my favorite places in all of the world. The producer of Triple Threat, um, he had this big yacht and we went on it and we had a lot of fun with the, the speed bikes and everything. It's paradise down there. Th Thailand's a wonderful place any, anywhere around that area. And how does that compare to being on a big budget film in England like Doctor Strange? Well, it's raining. Um, Does that make it easy though? Because I've wondered, you know, you're getting really hot doing all these moves. Is it easier in the cold rain? Well, we're filming Doctor Strange and it's, um, it was November or December and we're meant to be, I wasn't in this bit, but they built Hong Kong in Long Cross Studios and it was an amazing set. Wow. And they had to build a whole uh, thing over the top because it was in the open, but they knew it was going to rain yeah. because it's England. So you're, you're always dealing with that stuff. 
Um, but yeah, Doctor Strange was a massive film and I was on it for probably three or four months or something. Um, going back and doing things again and doing green screen stuff, doing it on the set, doing it with Benedict, doing it with a stuntman, doing it with a ghost. <laughs> You're doing it over and over and over again. They really have the time and the money to finesse everything. There's absolutely no excuse to get it wrong because there's a lot of money being piled into it. Um, and you know, you've got the... Uh, You've got doing it that way where you've, you've got time to really finesse it and it can be quite boring. And then you've got doing the lower budget independent movies where you've got to keep moving, moving really fast and complete opposite sides of the spectrum. But at the end of the day, filmmaking is filmmaking. It's all the same. It's just how much money have you got and how much time. And what was it like with your first meeting with Benedict Cumberbatch? Absolutely fine. Um, so he said hello to me and he was talking in an American accent because uh, he was in character and I was like, what? <laughs> I was a bit confused. And I was like, oh yeah, you're a real actor. That's why you're doing that. Um, but no, he's a great guy. Honestly, a, a, a genuine, um, really nice, sweet, humble guy and uh, a brilliant actor, obviously. And I know that you're a Marvel fan, so... Um in terms of making that movie, was it a sort of a fanboy moment for you? Well, I didn't read Doctor Strange. Didn't know much about Doctor Strange. In fact, when they called me in to talk about being in the movie, I was like, what, Doctor Strange? There's martial arts in that. Why, <laughs> you, what, what's going on? But of course it makes perfect sense. I just didn't know much about the character. I don't think Doctor Strange was very big in England. No. Uh, but the, certainly wasn't in any of the comics stores I or well, news agents that I was going to. Um, I was a big Spider-Man fan. Yeah. The Punisher, Daredevil, yeah. uh, Moon Knight. That's the sort of stuff I was reading. Batman. That's fantastic. I mean, speaking of Marvel, I understand because we see you in X-Men Origins Wolverine and you're sort of sharing the role with Ryan Reynolds. Is that right? It's Deadpool. How did that work? So what it was, full disclosure, so that's almost 10 years ago, that movie, so I'll just be honest about it. <laughs> Maybe <Yeah>. nobody minds. <laughs> no, because what it was is Ryan Reynolds was not um, available for the sequence where he turns into Weapon 11 and fights uh, Sabretooth and Wolverine at the end of the movie. He was only available for the bit that they shot before where he was Wade Wilson. So they had a predicament. Do they cast another actor? I mean, this I'm imagining what a producer would be thinking here. Or do they film the Deadpool stuff with somebody else pretending to be Ryan? So that was a decision they made. So that's why he's the merc with the mouth has had his mouth sewn shut because Ryan Reynolds was not there. If your actor's not there and you're getting in a, a stunt performer, it's probably best not to give him a load of dialogue, right? <laughs> so everyone's like, why the hell would you sew his mouth shut? And I agree, but in their defense, they really didn't have a choice because yeah. they just didn't have Ryan for that, uh, for that section in the movie. Yeah. So that, that's how they ended up making that harebrained decision. You can impersonate him well. Yeah. But um, I had a great time working with Hugh Chapman. He's... Uh, you know, out of all the actors I've worked with, mm -hmm. he, he's one of the, the, nicest, uh, the nicest guys there is. And um, in terms of sort of working on other movies, because you've obviously been sort of uh, smaller roles in things like the Marvel movies, but you took the lead in Undisputed, certainly for the sequels. Is that, would you say, the role that you're most recognized for? Yeah, probably. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm most recognized for that because Doctor Strange w will reach more people. Mm -hmm. But certainly that, that was the role that I felt things changed when Undisputed 2 came out about a year after it had been out for a bit. I could feel that something was happening in my career. Yeah. I was starting to get somewhere because of playing that character certainly struck a chord with people. And this is a character that was the villain in Undisputed 2. 
And, you know, we didn't go into it thinking, oh, this guy's going to be a, a cult icon or whatever. Yeah. I just wanted to play the part. Uh, but we instilled him with a sense of honor. And then we did Undisputed 3, where he was the, the hero or anti-hero. And now we've got Undisputed 4 coming out. And, yeah, he's just a really popular, popular guy. It's funny how it happens sometimes. We didn't really expect it. Yeah, because he kind of switched, I guess, into the anti-hero, I guess. Yeah, I think he's just a cool character that doesn't take any SHIT. Yeah. And people appreciate that. A proper anti-hero. And he's really iconic. And I was wondering, you know, especially with the tattoos, I think the, the circle, that's supposed to be this is karate, but he's a mixed martial artist, isn't he? You know your stuff. Yeah, so this uh, symbol on the chest is a symbol from uh, Okinawan karate, I believe. And then obviously he's a made man in the Russian mafia. Um, but yeah, he's, this was the first film to showcase mixed martial arts as it exists today. Back in 2006, um, this is the first mixed martial arts film. So that's, uh, you know, that's something. we saw what was going to happen, I think. And obviously you now, you've been playing that role for several years. Is it quite easy to slip back into the Russian accent? It is no problem for me. I do it <laughs> all the time, but it's really hard to not swear <laughs> while I'm doing my boyka voice. Yeah, he swears You have to be careful. <laughs> Fantastic. And then any chance you might do an Undisputed 5? Well, listen, guys. I want to do an Undisputed 5, and if there's any fans of the other movies out here... Do you guys want an Undisputed 5? Well, okay. make sure that you purchase it legally. <laughs> These films don't go on the cinema because they're, you know, genre-independent films, and I need your support. If you're torrenting films all the time and not paying for them, do you not realize that they're going to go away? Only the movies that go on the theaters make money. The DVD market is dead. You've got to support films like this, otherwise we can't make them. And I worked so hard on Undisputed 4, and it's been torrented to death at the moment. People, are, people go on my Facebook page and say, hey Scott, I just want you to know I've just watched Undisputed 4. It was brilliant, mate, well done. I'm thinking, you know, I know you've downloaded it for free, so why don't you take your thanks elsewhere, to be honest, because it needs to make money. Otherwise, we can't do another one. I have to kickstarter it. It's not a victimless crime. No. Um, but making, in terms of making movies... Sorry, don't get me started. <laughs> but in terms of making movies, you are here uh, making and promoting Accident Man, which looks fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about your role in that? Accident Man is a British comic book from the early 90s written by Pat Mills, who also wrote Judge Dredd. It was... Uh, not a, it was an, a bit of an obscure comic, but I got a hold of it when I was 15, and I loved the concept, I loved the character. It's extremely um, British. He's a hitman that is able to kill people and make it look like an accident. So nobody ever questions you know, how the guy died. No, they don't look into it because they just assume it's an accident, right? So he works for Big Ray, who is the landlord of a pub where all these, a British pub, uh, membership only, where all these other killers drink there. You've got Poison Pete, mm -hmm. you've got Jane the Ripper, you've got Carnage Cliff, axe-wielding murderer, you've got Mick and Mac, ex-SAS, ex-Navy SEAL. <laughs> you've got all these colourful killers um, in this, like, sort of underworld London on steroids. And... Uh, it's been my dream project since I was 15, since I got the comic book. I wrote the script with my friend from school, Fantastic. Stu Small. Uh, I optioned the rights myself. I put my own money into it. I took a bit of a risk. I managed to get Sony Pictures to, uh, to agree to finance the movie, and we shot it in London uh, November, December last year. We're doing the post-production on it right now. And I, I'm extremely proud of it. This is, this is the, the passion project for me. This is the dream. It's loads of uh, martial arts action, as you would expect from me, but it's also very British, lots of comedy, um, dark sense of humor, mm -hmm. loads of violence. 
Uh, and not the squeamish. other stars, like other action stars playing the other assassin. Well, we got Ray Stevenson, who was uh, a one time The Punisher. Yeah. We've got Ray Park, Darth Maul, you guys all know. Uh, Michael Jai White. Um, David Paymer, Oscar nominated David Paymer. Um, newcomer um, Amy Johnston, the, the girl there, incredible martial artist in her own right. Um, Nick Moran's in it from uh, Lock, Stock and Harry Potter. Yeah, great cast, you know, and it was, this is Amy Johnson here. Um, and she it was, uh, kicked you about a little bit. Sorry? And she kicked you about a little bit. Oh, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's tough. Uh, but no, it's, uh, I'm really proud of the film. I can't wait for people to see it. If anybody downloads it, I'm going to smash them up. <laughs> well, I was wondering, you know, doing, because essentially Mike's a rogue assassin, sort of, fighting really for his life and to find to avenge his ex's death but in terms of real life have you actually been in any near-death experiences yourself well when i first started working in hong kong um safety can be a little bit lax <laughs> yeah. and there was some issues on a wire where it was uh, 20 foot up in the air or whatever and the wire broke but luckily it, it broke while they were I'd been up there all day, yeah. and then they, they let me down to go for a, the toilet break or whatever. And as they were hoisting me back up, I was about this far off the ground, and there wasn't a crash mat, and, I, and it broke. So obviously I was fine, but I'd been up there the whole day. Yeah. So that, I mean, that could have been bad. Um, the other one happened when I was drunk, and probably best not to talk about it, <laughs> Friday night. Well, everyone has their drunken experiences, right? I was young. <laughs> Um, and we saw you earlier um, in American Assassin, and you're in that film with Dylan O'Brien, who's actually more well known as an actor in Teen Wolf. So when you're working with actors who are not known for, as action stars, do you have to tone it down a notch at all? Um, what, what's interesting is because I, you know, that's a big part of what I do, the action stuff. A big part of it is having control so when I work with an, a normal actor who's not had a lot of action experience, um, I'm the one who's more likely to get hurt because they have less control right, and right. I'm very precise. Um, but I have to say, and I'm not just saying this, Dylan did a brilliant job. He has to do a load of fight sequences in this film. And he, he did a really great job. He's a very physical kid. And he picked it up really easily. Actually, I was scheduled to do a load of rehearsal with him in the lead up to a, a big fight that we have. Um, but we ended up just doing it twice because the stunt, stunt coordinator was like, well, he's a natural. I guess you can do it. <laughs> we might as well just take the rest of the day off. Wow. So yeah, he did a really good job. And Michael Keaton is also in that movie. Were you yeah. a fan of his Batman? Yeah, of course. Brilliant Batman. Um, I'm more of a fan of uh, Multiplicity. That's one of my oh, yeah. favorite comedies. I uh -huh. think th that film is so funny to me. <laughs> I love the crazy uh, uh, clone that he plays in that. He plays it well. Um, yeah, Michael Keaton, man. Amazing actor. It's a thrill to be with... Uh, and it was my second time working with Taylor because you know, I, I, ha yeah. I hung around with him when we did Wolverine. Yeah. Um, he's, a, he's a great guy as well. Fantastic. Um, we can take a couple of questions from the audience. So if you guys want to stick your hands up, and I'll come to you. Anybody got a question? There he is. Hi, Scott. Seen the trailer for Savage Dog. What can you tell us about it? It's savage. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a crazy, it's a crazy, violent revenge film where the plot is uh, very similar to many of the movies I've made where my loved one gets murdered and I have to seek revenge. So I go savage, savage like a dog and I wreak havoc on the people that caused it. I've done about 10 movies with that plot. So it's another one. And I guess uh, Accident Man's similar as well. Well, it is, but Accident Man's uh, a lot more nuanced and funny and different than that. No, we're not putting Accident Man in that bracket. But yeah, you're kind of right. <laughs> uh, any other questions? 
Hello, Scott. Hello, right. mate. <laughs> um, when you did uh, Undisputed 2 with Michael J. White, but you worked with him again on um, uh, thingy, uh, Triple X, was it a better relationship for you in that one? Because it was Goody and Baddy in uh, the first... In, uh, yeah, we're on the same one, team in uh, Triple Threat. Yeah. So uh, there's not much press going around about who plays Goody, who plays Baddy, but you've just broken. No, that. no, Mike, yeah. Mike is Mike is great. We got a great relationship, me oh, and Mike. No, we're good. we're legitimate friends outside of uh, filmmaking. I, when I'm in LA, I go to his uh, house in LA uh, to watch the UFC fights and everything. But yeah, um, obviously we're enemies in Undisputed too. But yeah, Triple Threat, we're on the same team. Um, yeah, uh, doing what we do. Are you fighting with or against Tony Jar in Triple Threat? Yeah, I have uh, a big fight with uh, Tony Jaa uh -huh. in the movie. Against him? Yeah, uh, me versus him, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a big one. He's very powerful. Uh, I've never felt power like it, to be honest, from any other martial arts actor. Really? Uh, the speed and the power that he has is honestly mind-blowing. Um, you see it in the movie, obviously, but to see it in the flesh, in person, to feel it, I was covered in bruises. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was going to be hard, and I didn't want it to be any different than the quintessential Tony Jaa experience should be. Uh, but he's, he's made from different DNA. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's a you just human. to feel his body is like rock solid. Yeah. And he's got, he's, you know, I'm probably more muscular, but there's a density to his physique that is uh it's odd really did you ask him how he does that how he manages is there any special no i don't thing? think he knows he just does it Born he can do way. it i mean the, the the story goes that when he was watching martial arts films as a kid he didn't realize that they were using wires um so he didn't put any any boundaries on what was possible he just said well I, i'll jump that high then because mm -hmm. he didn't realize it was wires wow the thing is what you notice about physical people and what can be done now in martial arts is, as far as the most amazing kick uh, what's been done now by the kids is mind-boggling uh, 10 years ago you would not even come close to some of the kicks they do now but it's all in the mind isn't it, it but until you see somebody do that and you realize oh that's actually possible now I'll do it and what's great about Tony is that he invented kicks that you'd never seen before he had the imagination to devise some kicks i like to think that i did that as well yeah. um but it's amazing when you see uh, somebody do something new uh you know but 10 years ago they think well that's not even possible well it, it is possible it's just that no one had done it yet and is that something that you see yourself doing even in your 70s, like still playing action? Or would you move into a different career? No, I'm sticking with the action. I yeah. love it, honestly. I, it is hard, and it does take its toll. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I will slow down. But I think I'm doing pretty well. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I'm okay. Got a few good 10 years, 20, 20 years left, I reckon. But one thing I want to ask you about, because... You obviously do action, but I saw you acting in a Sky One show called Mile High, where you can play a completely different character as a flight attendant. And at one point, you do a strip show as a pilot. Was that awkward at all? Was it what? Was it awkward at all? It's awkward you bringing it up now. <laughs> um, hey, it's a living. <laughs> um, different form of acting. Listen, in the early days, it was all about, I need... I need to work, I need to get experience as an actor. The more I do, the better I'll get. And yep. I still have that mentality. Sure. Um, so they offered me a job, and it was acting. Uh, unfortunate part was that it needed, uh, me, meant I needed to play a male stripper. <laughs> oh, you've oh, even yeah. brought up the picture. Look at that chin. <laughs> um, so I, I went for it, yeah. And, uh, you know, I had to... Uh, the funny thing was, we had to, I had to do a strip tease in the one episode. And they had all these extras there. And they didn't, they didn't, you know, it's not like I'm famous or anything at that point. Uh, they didn't know who it was. They thought I was a legitimate stripper. <laughs> I can't believe you're bringing up all these pictures. So I, they were all grabbing me and stuff like, uh, you know, like you could. Giving you cash? Like, or... Get off. Grabbing all the, you know, the bits they shouldn't. 
and I believe some of that show actually filmed in the XL. Is that right? Oh yeah, we used to come here. That's right. Forgot we used to come here and, and use it as the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. To, yeah. Um, All right, get the picture off. <laughs> unless you want to beat him. Switch pads, the one with the sword. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for talking about that and everything else. You've got loads of projects, obviously. I'm sure that the fans would love to talk to you about many more things for much more time, but we have to wrap it up now. So please, everyone, give a massive round of applause to our guest, Scott Atkins. Thank you. Thank you.